on Sailing Kittiwick, we sorted out the rigging on our new Tayana 37 Skua. We replaced the backstay chain plate and the backstay, shortened and remade the rigging wires, and then had to prepare the boat for some strong winds, which were heading our way, before sharpening our chisel to replace our rotten Samsung posts. We had quite a few questions about the bulkhead repair that the previous owner did. Um, stupidly, we didn't really think to film much of it at the time because we obviously didn't do it and then when we moved on board we just painted over it without really thinking too much about it but because there was quite a lot of interest I just wanted to um, show you guys the repair that um, the previous owner did um, basically the bulkheads were rotten from the side deck level down because water could get in through the bulwarks it wasn't through the teak deck in the end so there was still good plywood for him to attach the um, new repair to so what he did was cut out the rotten section of plywood extending from the hull where it's tabbed to the fiberglass all the way inboard until there was good solid dry plywood and then um, cut out new marine ply then put that in place and fiberglass it to the existing good bulkhead ply and um, the tabbing on the fiberglass to the hull. All in all we see they seem pretty good the repairs um, and I'll show you guys. This is the existing plywood bulkhead. This area was rotten because water had seeped down from the top corner up there, rotted all this. So this was all cut out and then the shape replicated in new um, marine ply and then as you can see here the fiberglassing has attached the two together. So it's a pretty nice sunny morning here in um, Spain. Elena's just gone off to do some laptop work for the day. Um, there's this really nice pool house where she goes to do laptop work so she's left me here on the boat and I'm going to do the first service of our engine that we've done. The engine's got about 800 hours so it's about due a service anyway and um, yeah I just kind of want to do it just you should kind of get to do these things when you get a boat to start off with. So I've got a list of jobs the first thing I'll do is um, check the coolant then I'll warm up the engine and change the oil and oil filter um, and then I'll see how I go from there, got a few other things to do as well. So I've got all my stuff together on the floor, got um, socket sets and filters and just like general tools, kitchen roll and then a bag for the oil filter, put that over the oil filter as you unscrew it and then hopefully it'll catch all the oil. Oh and the, this is probably the most important thing, the um, filter spanner type thing. I don't know if you can really see that, but the coolant level looks alright. So now the engine's nice and warmed up, I'm going to get the oil out and change the oil filter. So this is going to be pretty tricky to show, but right at the bottom of our engine, down by the bottom of the sump, there's a hose which comes up, which is for draining the oil. So I've just connected that to our oil extractor pump, which is a Peeler 6000, 
because I know our engine takes about five and a half liters of oil. So this thing's really cool. You just connect that to that um, hose coming up from the sump, and then you just um, give it a few pumps, and then you can see the oil's coming out. You can feel that the oil's quite warm in this, which is good because it should go out easily. And then it just uses like a kind of suction vacuum type thing. And it's slowly filling it up. I'll give it a few more pumps. So I couldn't really show it, but I basically just unscrewed the oil filter with this bag around it. And then you see that captures some of the oil that inevitably spills out. So I've got my replacement oil filter here. Now, some of you might be thinking, why is he putting that Perkins oil filter on this Volvo engine? But the engine itself is actually Perkins and it's much cheaper to get Perkins parts. Um, I ordered this from partsforengines.com I think that's what it's called and it's I think it cost about six six pounds in the Chandlery which is just over there the same Volvo filter will cost you about 22 pounds which is a complete rip-off because it's the same engine it's the exact same part um, so yeah good bit of advice is if you have a Volvo engine to look at Perkins parts if your um, engine is one of these or similar which is actually a Perkins model One of the common problems with our engine, the Volvo MD2040, um, is that the exhaust um, outlet is um, cast iron and where all the like steam and salt water and everything mixes and the exhaust gases obviously and gets really hot, it um, corrodes really easily. So I've got this um, stainless one, I don't know if you can see that, which um, I'm going to use to replace the cast iron one. It's quite, it's like known as the Achilles heel of these engines because it just always breaks. So it'd be good to swap that out. I can see a bit of corrosion on the old one. So it's definitely worth doing. And I've just got to get in the bottom of the lazarette to do that now. So that's our exhaust elbow there. And that's what I need to replace. So I need to get this hose off it, which goes down to the um, exhaust outlet right at the back of the boat. And then I need to get it off this heat exchanger cap and there's four bolts right at the back, I don't know if you can see them very well but I'll try and get them off, well I'll have to get them off and then hopefully it'll just pull off and then there's a gasket between that and the heat exchanger so um, yeah hopefully I'll be able to get it off okay and you can see there, I don't know if you can see it just by the um, top of this light thing that's where the um, corrosion has already started and it's cast iron so it'll corrode fairly quickly um, so that's the main reason I want to change it really. It, it's probably all right for a while But it's better to get it swapped out because that'll just start to cause problems So I've managed to swap the exhaust elbows around it was quite difficult getting the old one off because the um, nuts that held it off had welded in place and I could only get to it with like a tiny um, ratchet so yeah it took quite a lot of um, effort to get them off but they're off and I put the new one on with the new gasket and reconnected all the hoses I thought I'd show you the um, the old one it's pretty pretty manky inside I don't know if it shows up very well but the hole is definitely like quite constricted So it's a really nice place to walk along here. Sometimes if we have to throw away like a big bit of rubbish, we do it in the boatyard because they have the big bins there where you can get rid of 
you know, like the old dinghy, which was knackered or whatever. And there's quite good wildlife along here. Sometimes you see marsh harriers or kingfishers. Usually there's egrets around. So it's a really nice place to come for a little stroll. Especially because a lot of the time when we're sort of, our heads are in boat work, we don't really bother to get out and do other stuff. Which is a bit of a shame because it's a nice place, but this is just a short little walk, so usually we can be bothered to do it. So this rock that's um, behind us does um, a really good example of what's called a ripple map, which um, Polynesians used to navigate. If you were in somewhere like French Polynesia, where you have the big swell of the trade winds, and that rock would be the equivalent of an island, then on each side of it you can tell um, where the island is based on how the waves are acting. So on the front, the ripples just bounce straight back, and you can see that. And then around the sides, the ripples kind of curve around. If you were sailing, and you were a Polynesian, and you were right over there, and you could understand these things, then you could detect the um, changes in the waves, and you could tell in which direction the island is. Every now and then we like to come here to the boatyard and like look at the really cool boats like the one at the back. It's really cool. It's called Vixen 2. It's been here quite a while and every now and then we just like go and stare and admire at her. <laughs> it's really, really cool. It's got like a four metre draft, I think. Yeah, it's really huge. Widow mast schooner. Mm. And uh, one of our friends and patron um, has his boat here as well. And um, so we ever so often come and check that she's still all right because we have had quite a lot of wind storms this winter, really strong, sometimes up to 70 knots. Have you had a nice evening? Yeah, it was great. Just had a relaxing walk to the boatyard. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we just fancy sitting out here with our blankets and then I'll make dinner in a bit. Today's job is to sort out the hydraulic steering. There's nothing major that's really, really wrong with it, but a lot of the connections were um, DIY, like um, the previous owner had made them up himself. Um, and over time they've just become a bit loose and there's quite a lot of hydraulic fluid leaking around. Not so much that we need to like keep filling it up but um, yeah it just makes the whole lazarette it's got all this kind of oil over it. So I've got a load of new replacement um, fittings which are um, sort of factory made up ones and from what I can tell from the ones that are in there they seem to fare a lot better. They seem to um, be a lot tighter um, so yeah that's what I'm going to use and I'm going to install them all today. So I'll give you a quick tour of our hydraulic steering system. This is where most of the stuff is going on. So these come from the um, steering pedestal and they go into this check valve which stops hydraulic fluid going back. That means that when you set the wheel in position the rudder can't move it which is really good because you can just set the wheel and it will just um, hold the rudder in that position. And then this one in the middle, I think, returns fluid to the hydraulic pump from the autopilot, which is this thing down here. And then this thing is like a, with the yellow handle, is like a bypass valve. So if you want to use the emergency tiller, then that can just completely deactivate the hydraulic steering. And then from that, these basically run back to the um, hydraulic ram, which is this thing, which drives our rudder post. This thing over here is a rudder sensor for the um, autopilot. So this is what I mean by the factory made up fitting. You can see that this hose has already got a fitting, um, I'm not sure what this is, crimped or swaged or something onto the end. And then it's got this with a proper 
um, sort of mating surface on this thing and then that provides a much better fitting than the um, like the copper tubes that the previous owner has used. The other thing I'm replacing is the ball valve for the bypass. This is a proper hydraulic one. Um, it's really sturdily made, but the other one that was on there seems a bit flaky. I'm not sure if it's bypassing fluid, so yeah, this is a proper one to use. My battery on the camera ran out halfway through doing that, but um, yeah, I basically just replaced everything. It was fairly easy. Hello everyone from Skua Saloon. Thank you for watching this episode. We just wanted to give you a really quick real-time update and uh, let you know that there's only three more boat work episodes and then we'll go for a test sail and finally set off and sail on Skua and live life on the hook on our new boat. We realised that the boat work videos aren't everyone's cup of tea, not everyone's into them and some people just want to watch us go sailing and um, we totally get that and we're also really keen to show you skua sailing and that is why these videos of the boat refit are going out weekly we really enjoyed your reactions to the new boat in the comments guys it seems like everyone's super excited about skua and we are as well of course and we also got a few comments about videos going weekly which has been received quite well and we just wanted to be a little bit honest and upfront about it and just let you know that we did that mainly to bring the channel closer to real time and sort of um, finish off the boat work videos, round them up a little bit faster but this probably won't be forever the reality for us is that we need to earn money to support ourselves. We'd really, really love to be full-time um, video makers for you guys to um, just spend all of our time doing that. But putting out one video per week for us doesn't leave enough time for also doing freelance work, which we need to do to earn money. If eventually we can earn enough money from the videos to mainly support ourselves from them, then we will definitely be doing one video per week permanently. So if you're really keen to see one video per week from us, then consider supporting our channel. If not, don't worry, we're not going anywhere. We're just going to have to drop back to fortnightly videos so that we have the time to actually earn money to live on, uh, just like we have done for the past two years. Thanks a lot to all of our patrons and viewers, you guys are really great. And thanks as well to everyone who's left us a comment on the boat refit videos, giving us tips about particular bits of boat work or opinions on things. It's been super helpful and we've incorporated some of that stuff as we go along. We're super grateful to everyone who follows along on our adventure. See you next week for an episode in which I'll show you how I redid the whole canvas work for Skua. We really got we really enjoyed <laughs> We really got <enjoyed. laughs> Come on, come on. <clears throat> We really enjoyed you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Concentrate. I'm trying. Really you're good, you're good. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. <clears throat>